Hey guys, Justin Brochetti here. I'm a patient at the Galani Institute and I wanted to take a moment. I actually uh, stopped Dr. Galani at the end of his busy day. He had just gotten done with a bunch of surgeries. I asked for a little bit of his time and he did me one better. He actually allowed me to videotape um, some of the questions that I had for him. So welcome, you get to join us. So, Dr. Galani, thank you so much for sitting down with me. I appreciate it, first and foremost. Anything for my patients, anytime. Yeah, the, bi the big thing I, I've got on my mind is, is you know, with, with, with all the people you treat and how busy you are as a doctor, um, from, you treat people from around the world. You really care about who they are as people. Um, but tell me a little bit about why my case was so easy for you to diagnose and so easy for you to take care of. I had keratoconus, I still have it, but it's as good as fixed now. Um, so kind of walk me through that. Like, sure. why was it so easy for you? So it wasn't easy for me. <laughs> all of you, as you know, my concept does you know, first of all, I'm indebted to all of you. Mm -hmm. You all have addicted me to keep on performing because I've seen the results. Um, as you know, I teach eye surgeons all over the world. We've seen patients here even today from practically every continent they have come here. And um, to me, it's very simple. If a patient is hurting as far as their vision is concerned, it's the doctor's job to fix it. Mm -hmm. As I keep saying, just because you carry a cornice, meaning you're 11 feet tall, right. doesn't mean you can't have a suit. It's the tailor's job to work harder. Mm -hmm. You must have a suit. It's true. So coming back to your question, uh, if I may answer in a more generic way, as, as I do, we are doing this impromptu, guys, for, as always. When my patients ask for my time, I answer is always yes. And even though we're at the end of a busy day, we've had a very nice uh, busy day, a lot of patients we've uh, worked on. It's a pleasure. So the concept to me is, I call it think outside the cone. Right? That's how I teach <laughs> yeah. doctors, it's my concept. But the protocol that I use uh, for about 20 different techniques and technologies, I custom designed to it. My first point is attitude. Mm. I believe keratoconus patients can see. So if you think of keratoconus as uh, somebody with a broken leg and it's bent, Right? So the bone's broken and it's bent. Now, many people will look at that and go, oh, that's okay. Uh, let's put you, uh, let's give you a nice crutch and you'll be walking. Fine, that's what a contact lens does. So a contact lens works, whether it's a soft lens, RGP lens, scleral contact, it works and makes you see with keratoconus. The problem is nobody's fixed your keratoconus under it. A contact lens I like to describe as a Superman suit. Perfect six pack in the front. When you take it off at night, you're still 40 inch waist. <laughs> Meaning you're still not able to see. True. So the disability continues and you're also dependent. So what I say is do not leave keratoconus patients disabled and dependent. Now, another aspect of this, cross-linking. Collagen cross-linking has become very popular after approval in the US uh, by the FDA. I've been involved in it for decades uh, abroad. Uh, before approval here too. And I absolutely love the technique, but it should not be used randomly on every keratoconus patient. Mm -hmm. Why? Think about it. Think of keratoconus as a bent back, okay? Kyphosis, we call it. Or even a bent bone, since we're talking about bones, all right? Bent bone and a broken bone. Mm -hmm. Thin, right? It's broken. And it, let's say it's bent like this. Now, by cross-linking, what you're telling the patient is, when I do this cross-linking for you, it won't bend anymore. Yes, but understand one fact. They haven't straightened you yet. So all your life you will still be bent, meaning you're still disabled with the cross-linking. Uh, yeah. So my whole concept is first fix the vision of the keratoconus patient. Make it straight, make the bone straight, align it, fix it. Then put the cement or cross-link it and make it permanent. How simple is this logic? That's perfect. So the, this concept just I call my kyphoscoliosis, a keratoscoliosis concept. Kerato is cornea, scoliosis is bent spine, right? Keratoscoliosis concept. So cross-linking very important, but you must use it to permanize something you have corrected first. Second, it should be used in those patients which are not ready for surgery, like young patients who are still changing. Mm -hmm. All right. So contact lenses are very important, sure. but to be used after surgery has been done. So first use for contact lenses, whatever kind, scleral, RGP, are to be used in patients who are not yet ready for surgery, young patients who are still to become stable. And two, after someone performs surgery to help you, residual vision can be got with the scleral contact. Okay. Great job. But do not put it on first and leave the patient disabled underneath and then send the patient to be like, today you saw these keratoconus patients who came in from London, Jordan, uh, California, New York. They all come to a point where it's so damaged. Yes. 
Because they kept on and on wearing contacts. Besides, those contacts are so expensive. You know that thousands of dollars for decades. Right. And underneath that, your cone is getting worse and worse, and you're crossing my visual potential, now going into structural. This is important, Justin. Sure. So all my 20 techniques and different technologies, I break into two simple categories. Okay. Visual and structural. Got it. Visual is just when patient has capacity to see despite the care of corner. Meaning, when they wear glasses or contacts, not scleral contact, but soft contacts mm -hmm. and glasses, and they're seeing, and they're seeing even 2030, 2040, even 2020. These patients I can bring in most cases to even 2020 without glasses and contacts. Gotcha. By using my visual techniques, laser plastique, ICLs, cataract based techniques with new generation lens implants, piggyback lens technologies, all these things I can use which are visual category and keep keratoconus patients at perfect vision or best vision I can without any glasses. Contact. Sure, yeah. Once they cross the visual category and they become structural, meaning now having worn contacts for so long, they've developed scars, their cornea is less than 200 microns, they have no capacity to see with glasses and soft contacts, now you're structural. Now I have to use structural surgeries to make a new foundation, which is intacts that I didn't use, yes, special sir. rings that I do, or I may do a lamellar graft for you, or I may do cross-linking combination techniques, where I have to now create a new foundation, which is stable. Once that foundation becomes stable mm -hmm. and measurable, just two words, stable and measurable. Okay. Now I can make you visual. Let's go. Because I corrected your foundation. Actually, you, Justin, are in a perfect example of this. His left eye was so advanced, keratoconus, by the time his doctor sent him over, I did a structural surgery for him. We did the special intact technique. The smile concept, right? <laughs> and by doing that now, we have brought him to a point where he has become so measurable and stable, as I measured you today, mm -hmm. he can read right up to 2020 minus line. So guess where I'm going now? Laser plastique, a visual surgery, and free him up. His right eye is still visual, keratoconus. So I will go straight to vision surgery and give him freedom. Mm -hmm. Remember again, keratoconus cannot be guaranteed the outcome because it is an abnormal eye. But I want doctors to fight for that. Because I've seen these results. You saw patients, or even on your day one post-op, right? The next day from surgery, from all over the planet, you were sitting and chatting. Well, and that, that actually leads me to my next question. You sure. know, there were was, there was so many people from so many different backgrounds, and we, we had all agreed that based on what you had done for us, that there had to be some kind of trick to you. Um, and, and, and so we, we did our research. We started looking into to your past, your history, yes, yes. your teachings, your seminars around the world. Um, the way you deal with patients day in and day out. Like we, we really did some research and we really couldn't not find... Research. You guys talk me. A kind of, yeah. My patients don't only do research. Look, they they I'm stalk not me they, yeah, for true. years. All of you come in. In fact, they have a competition when you guys meet here, right? <laughs> That's true. It's like, who stalked Dr. Galani for longer? I have like nine years, 10 years. The last guy I had was 16 years. Yeah, yeah for anyway. sure. But, but, but it comes down to one question. And the question is, is with all of this emphasis on the patient and solutions and hope, what's in it for you? What's in it for oh, you? No one's ever asked me that. Maybe I'm ge I've gotten addicted over my three decades, uh, Justin, to all of you, my patients. Mm -hmm. um, I have seen results. I mean, how long have you been here now? Two hours? A three, actually. Three. Yeah. And here's the best part. Nobody waits here. You've nope. been three hours with me. Yep. So also that's another thing justin which uh, i teach doctors a lot of concepts not only how to care for patients but how to be in their practice how to love people how to care not to line up people like 80 you know people lined up in the office waiting waiting yeah all of you when you come in how many patients do you see in the lobby nobody None. except you one just me so that's why it's a lobby not a waiting room each one of you comes one at a time from all over the world and yet when you're leaving on post-op day you see suddenly 30 people mm. so over three decades of doing this and seeing the results in my own dear patients, and that too from all levels they come to me, from mild to extreme complicated keratoconus, uh, real keratotomy, corneal scars, LASIK complications. Having seen the results, I must say today, uh, impromptu, it's as if I've got addicted to helping. Uh, there's nothing in it for me. I mean, I don't do this for money. That's why we don't advertise. We don't do any deals with anybody. No kickbacks to any referral doctors, nothing. It's, it's intense pride and integrity. Wow. I mean, to me, Justin, if you can imagine these patients you saw landing in Ubers and going mm -hmm. back to hotels. Yeah. There's another very personal side to this, if you notice. Uh, I, I nearly get attached to all of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, who the hell calls you at night? Bang. <laughs> Justin, hurry. 
right? Yeah. Chasing in the hotel. How are you? Are you resting? That's true. So <laughs> it becomes personal. For example, patients come here and they have a psychological baggage. They've already had surgery with doctors who call themselves carotone of experts. I'm like, if you're an expert, show the poor patient results of at least 1,000 patients over at least two decades. Sure. And with all due respects, I would want more people to be experts in this. So I teach for free. I mean, uh, my work is transparent. Uh, we take live videos like you, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't give them a script. There's no Starbucks card for them. Nope. They're right on video from in surgery to outside to after that, impromptu. I show my surgery transparent all the time. There's a waiting, there's a glass view, there's videos playing for surgeons. My YouTube is flooded with my channel, Gulani Academy. I want doctors to do these things, and I'm sure they can. But I first want them to understand that it's possible. Cannot let a keratoconus patient just go downhill and say, let's wait till you get a transplant. In the meanwhile, let's put contacts. And no, you're decreasing their productivity in life. Then you need to fight. Sure. You cannot guarantee outcomes, but yes. So I believe my one short answer to this long impromptu answer was, maybe I'm getting addicted to my own results, my, my passion that you all have all returned with so much confidence in me. And uh, I truly, I know all of you, as you know, by name, thousands of my patients, I know all by name, so I don't have to even see a chart. It's a pleasure. And that you all have taken my passion and you all are so invigorated, like you, this is mm -hmm. an amazing a professional, he teaches dances, uh, what, what, so many things you do. <laughs> but you all also, to pin me down and say, Doc, come on, let's do a QA. and a and I'm always game because this is so real. I don't have to rehearse before any talk I do. When I teach on stage all over, I'll just go. I mean, it's straight from my heart. It's the results of last three decades. My patients are online uh, for y'all uh, with no incentive and mm -hmm. they're talking their hearts out. And uh, none of them are ordinary too, by the way. All my patients, like I said, they stalk me. They've done research. <laughs> they've they've uh, asked 10, 15 doctors before they fly here. And... Um, it's it's a blessing to perform for you all, absolutely. Well, that, again, I can't thank you. I don't know if that answers your question, but it does. It does. And and truth truth be told, I would love to see you as a bigger influencer in in uh, social media and in in our networking spaces that we have available to us, um, guys. If you haven't checked out, um, you know his Facebook page, please go check it out. Um, again, he's doing things that nobody else is doing right now, and it comes from a place of heart. Uh, belief and it comes from a place of really strong fundamental uh, in his words addiction to help like he's trying to give help so look for him on Twitter look for him on um, Instagram and also TikTok coming soon really yeah <laughs> he needs well, to be well I haven't done that yet but we, we do have a, a lot of my videos are on YouTube we again it's like every day in my institute we have so much video patients do it they come put videos in my face before surgery <laughs> they do so it's a lot of accountability because their trust is so high but also they're putting me on the line because they have me live on video and just like right now impromptu so all i can say is whether you have keratoconus mild or severe even if you've had failed keratoconus surgeries with doctors anywhere in the world you can be helped. Yes. There is no such thing as can be done as I keep teaching all the time. And please, I'm simple. I'm a simple human. I could make a mistake, but I want doctors to at least fight. As I say all the time, Justin, when I teach, I say a doctor's inability, a doctor's inability should not become a patient's disability. Wow. That's huge. Simple. Huge. Fight. Fight for these patients. They're poor thing. They're born with keratoconus. Uh, there's a choice. Always a choice, absolutely. You know, and with a choice comes you know, options. So, Dr. Blani, thank you. Always a pleasure. I appreciate it. And we look forward to fixing you. Right eye, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> pleasure. Thank awesome. you again, guys. Pleasure, Dr. Blani.